Hi guys, welcome to this module in Microsoft Excel. In this session, I want to show you how you can use some of the form controls that are part of the developer tab where you don't need to use Visual Basic. If you haven't got the developer tab active, you need to go to the file tab, options, customize ribbon, and then you can just tick that option there, developer, and then it will appear. So what if you've got in there are some controls that you can utilize in any spreadsheet. So on the screen, I have an example of a few of those. So this is a drop down list with some courses. When I change the course, the price changes. And this one, if I change this, the number of students changes. Now over on this side, you've got um, a loan amount of uh, £1,000 over 10 months. So if I use this arrow, that will change that to 2000 3000 4000 etc. And this one will increase the duration. Then I've got these interest rates down the left there. So interest rate of 10%, 10%. If they have insurance, I'll take that tick off, they will get a discount of... 5%. So if I put the interest rate to 20% and 15% that is actually 20%. That's 20%. That now says 15. And then in this cell there is the PMT function with an if statement just looking at what comes in there and working out what the monthly payment would be based on this criteria. 20% 15% uh, discount rate 4000 loan over 20 months you'd be paying that off. So all of these are easy to use, no need for any Visual Basic code, and it's as simple as this. So I'll do this one on the left first of all, so you can see how it works. So this box, if I just right click on it and just move it, you can see that underneath there, there is a number. If I do the same on this one, just move this, you can see that there is also um, well, the number linked to it, but it's the students. It's not underneath it. It's a student. So I've hidden that one. I haven't hidden this one because that's the one that's moving. And same goes with all of these. If I just change this color scheme to something a little lighter, you can see that there are things hidden there. If I take that tick off, it's going true or false. If I move this box, there's a number underneath it there, number two, which is why that says 20%. J3 divided by 10. If I move this one out of the way for a minute, there's no, nothing under that one. It's the same as this one. That's just the number um, moving, this number moving. And this one is linked to that number as well, so that's going to change there. So they've all got cells that they're linked to. And the way you do it is this. If I just draw the combo box first, so I'll just draw a little combo box. So this is the one I'm trying to replicate. When you right click on it, you go into format control and it's asking you for an input range. Now I've already got an input range set up on a different sheet data. So this is the input range. Like so. And then you have a cell link. So the cell link would be something on this sheet. So I'll just put it into that cell for now and then click OK to that one. So when you select one of these options, it will put a corresponding number, i.e. the position it is in that list, in the cell that you've linked to. So one, two, three, four, five, that should go all the way down to five. So then you can use that number to work out your price. So what I've got there is an if statement that's looking um, at that number and then giving the price depending on whatever number that is. Now, there is a limit to how many if statements you, you can use. There's quite a lot in the newer versions, but the formula is going to get big, so I'll try to avoid that if you can. Now, this one, the spinner as it's called, if I just do the same thing there, get the spinner tool, which is that one. You draw your little spinner tool, same process, right click, format control. So you can see you've got different increment options maximum of 30,000 there cell link so it's going to increment by one cell link i'll just do it next to it 
so you can see it okay so when I click away from that and then just start moving up you can see that you're getting incrementing by one on that and then again you can use that so I'm using this one for the quantities for students so you can see it moving there I'll just move that one out of the way in fact I'll just delete that one off just cut it for now delete that now coming over to this um, these little circles these little buttons and a ticky box if you draw a tick box which is that one you're going to get the same thing coming up, but you are getting a true or false option. So, same thing, cell reference next to it so you can see it. Come away. Okay. While it's still selected like that, you can get rid of the text. Um, type whatever text you want there. Click away. And then tick, and it puts true. Tick, it puts false. So you can see there, look, I've got a true or false um, based on whether this, this is ticked. So they get a discount or not. So if that's not ticked, it's the same rate as this one. So it's all to do with the tick or not ticked. So that's that one. The next one is this, this, this little button control, which is part of a series. So if you, you need to put more than one on there, I've already got um, four there, so I tick tick once. It's going ten. If I just click on this, if I just move this one a minute, so you can see what's behind it. I just push it up. You see, there's a well, let's let go. Let's just see if I can push it out of the way. So there's a one, a two, a three, a four. That's how this is working, and their formula is there divided by 10, so it gives you the right percentage. So if I draw another one, it will it will create a 5. So I'll just get the, let's draw it down here, and change the label, make it a bit bigger actually. So if I say 50%, when I tick that one, it automatically links to the one that you already had on the sheet. So if I was doing this from scratch, I could set where I want the link to be. So it's going one, two, three, four, and now this one says five. And if I right click that and format control and change that cell link to somewhere else, okay. So it's saying five there, but if I tick that one now, even though I just changed the last one I did, they're all looking at the same cell. So no matter which one you change, I'll just put that back, format control, get it to link to the correct place. Okay, so now they're all back, linking to the right place. Now the, the other, let me just get rid of this one. The other bar there is the same as this really this is just when you scroll this it's just changing that number by 10 so I'll just do that one and that'll be it if I drop this list down so that's this one and you can just do exactly the same so this could be quite long really you could have a a long list that you want to format but right click same thing format control this is incrementing by one but on that one there I've got it going by 10 and cell link let's just say we'll put it there okay to that click away start sliding through it should go all the way up to 100 which is the default so there's your sliding scale which is what this is doing changing the months like so so that is a quick overview of what you can do with these form controls without using Visual Basic in any spreadsheet. So I do use this these spinners quite often. Not so much that, but I, you can obviously see the uses of these when you want to fill in a form like this, quickly get things to work um, 
payments and stuff like that for loans if you work in the in the mortgage in, mortgage mortgage industry that would be a useful tool but that's the end of uh, this session um thanks for your time